This is, of course, a Franz Ferdinand. Welcome back. Now, we're all looking forward to The Voice UK joining ITV next winter. But did you know that one of the biggest stars of the American version is actually Scottish? It is true. Yep. Not only did he take part, but he finished runner-up, and he's here to tell us all about it. Welcome to Terry McDermott. Good How's to going? see you. Yeah, thank, thank you for coming you. in. Yeah, thanks for thank having you. me. So, first of all, how does a Scottish guy <laughs> end up on The Voice USA uh, and think, finishing runner-up? I think with a stroke of luck. <laughs> um, you know, when I left, uh, I left Scotland in 2003, uh, it was in a band called Drive Blind from, from, from Aberdeen, and uh, when I left and joined the... I suppose it was the biggest writer company in the world at the time. If you told me I would have ended up just a number of years later on The Voice USA, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, but, yeah, it's a pretty... Pretty strange meandering story, but I, yeah. I did. It took me took me all the way to that stage. Well, Do you have congratulations, to have, I know, yeah. it's great. Do you have to have lived in America for a certain amount of time before you can enter a, no. A, America? No. I, you know, I don't know what the stipulations are there. I don't suppose it was really a problem for me because I'd lived there long enough, but they never mentioned anything like that. Nobody was kind of scrutinising. Where have you yeah. lived the last five years? No. They just love your music yeah. and they, they got involved. I yeah, guess it which is brilliant. Out. Now, how big is the voice in the States? I mean, is it in the same kind of scale that it is here in Britain? Well, Does everyone know about it? The, the best statistic, I think, that sums it up for me is when I sang on the final show, I sang to, a, I sang to an audience that was three times the population of Scotland. <gasps> wow. So that, wow. Kind of puts it, yeah. that kind of puts it in a perspective. That's yeah. incredible. So, TV yeah. shows that, like that are huge in, in the States. Oh, yeah. They love that kind of that, yeah. that format of TV. Uh, who, who were the judges then on the season that you were on? Uh, and we had Christina on? Aguilera, who was a riot. Heard to her. So yeah. cool. She was a riot. <laughs> um, Blake Shelton, who was, who was my, my coach, yep. uh, big American country star. Uh, CeeLo Green. Wow. Um, I'm trying to think of the fourth one. Adam Levine, of course. Oh, ah, yes. yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Four amazing yeah. judges. I know. Yeah. What I mean, what took you to the states in the first place? Is it is it a very different music scene than it is here in Scotland? Um, well, yes. Yeah. yeah, I think um, I think when we left, we were very much a Scottish band. Um, when we got to America, that we obviously they, they liked what we were what we're selling, but I think at the same time we were going around America and playing audiences that maybe hadn't ever maybe seen a Scottish band before. You yeah. know, playing little venues in Texas or. You know, and they're like kind of looking at us funny, but it, but it worked out great. We, you know, we got tour the world and, and play some amazing shows and, and life life changing experiences. Yeah, no wonder. Do you think if you stayed here in the UK, you would have gone down the same kind of TV talent show route? Do you think you would have been on X Factor or The Voice you UK? Know, I honestly don't know. I don't. I, I, I can't say that for sure. Um, I, I didn't expect to end up. You know, and it was actually the American Voice. They actually kind of came to me because they knew I was out there. Because okay. the the voice is actually a universal Universal Records are attached to the voice, and I'd been on two major Universal labels, right. so they kind of knew I was out there. So they said, "Would you be interested in going on the show?" I said, "Well, <laughs> it's not quite what I expected, <laughs> yeah. but why not? For sure, why not give it a go?" Yeah. So, what brings you back to Scotland at the moment, then? I'm on a solo tour. Uh, I'm releasing uh, a new single, "Lost Again," which is out October the seventh. Mm -hmm. um, played played my Scottish shows the last few days. Played uh, Edinburgh, Peterhead, and Aberdeen. And I'm off to London tomorrow. Nice. Uh, playing the Slaughtered Lamb tomorrow night, uh, and then Manchester Gulliver's back to London to play the O2 Islington, supporting Stuart Mack. Yikes! Busy then, man. Yeah, and then off to Ghent in Belgium, uh, and then finishing up in Paris on October the eighth. Wow. That's a bit, that's the life on the road, though, isn't it? It is. That's, people might think that sounds great and glamorous, and it's great. What an experience! But I'd imagine it is hard work being on the road. For that it is hard time. work, especially when you're away from your family for a very long time. But you know, it's this is what we do. And yeah. where's home for you now, though? Where does it? Finish? I live in New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, I've lived in New Orleans for quite a few years now. And yeah. is the weather like that in New Orleans just now? <laughs> but in that window uh, behind you there? It's not quite the same. No. You no. need to come back home at least once a year, get that reality check and the head back I want out. A good cup of tea. A good Scottish good, Ranger. Good pint of lager. <laughs> oh, that's right, you can head back well, over. We're delighted you came to have a chat to us. Thank Congratulations thanks and thanks very, very much. Good to Cheers. see you. Now, if you're a fan of musicals, films and cars, then you're in for a treat because the latest arrival at Glasgow's Riverside Museum is one of the most famous film vehicles of all time. Absolutely. An original Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is now part of a 